So Dr. Maddock, consumers seem surprised to find out that all ground beef isn't made by grinding a whole muscle. How do we make ground beef and why do we use trimmings? Well, you know, ground beef as a as a concept is basically any sort of beef can be ground. It could be whole muscle cuts or it could be trimmings. And the, the fact of the matter is, is not every piece of beef in an entire uh, beef animal or beef carcass is, is suitable to have a, it turn into whole muscle cut of any sort. Um, for example, we have very thin pieces of meat that, that lay over the ribs or, or other places. And so it makes sense to utilize these thin cuts uh, that really can't be used for any other purpose for, for ground beef. The other thing is during the uh, production or fabrication of whole muscle cuts, we get little pieces of meat that get cut off here and there to, to, to make the cut look the right way. And so then we use those in ground beef as well. Is that what trimmings are? Yes, yeah, so it's what, definitely what trimmings can, are. Can you show us what a trimming is here? Okay, here we have some examples of trimmings. Um, this right here is called the plate, and it's the meat that lays over the ribs of the animal. Uh, and the plate is about 50% fat and 50% lean. And here's an example of the plate laid out. Um, these would be considered trimmings because almost all of this is gonna end up in ground beef. And what we'll do with this plate uh, meat, which is about 50-50, is what oftentimes happens is we'll take another source of trimmings from the shank that is very lean. This is about 90% lean meat. And then through uh, balancing and combination, we can hit a specific fat target, for like for example, 80-20, or 73.27 or 75.25 uh, for whatever consumers want or what the, the market is requiring. So these trimmings allow us to uh, hit a fat target or fat and lean target that's, uh, that is meeting the market uh, demand. So what you're saying basically then is when you break this carcass down into these smaller pieces, you get Trimmings. Trimmings, yes, we had a lot of trimmings. And it is important to, to note that when, when we break a, a beef carcass down, somewhere between 15 and 20% of the weight of that carcass is gonna be trimming. And if that wasn't used in, in the production of ground beef, it would be lost, and that's a, a lot of meat. Is there a difference in the safety of ground beef that's made from a whole muscle versus ground beef that's made from a blend of trimmings? Uh, no, not at all. You know, beef is, is essentially beef. And with the interventions the industry has put in place, um, any sort of bacterial contamination is, is at such low levels that it really wouldn't matter. And one of the concerns is that the trimmings come from the surface of the animal, which is true, but those whole muscle cuts are also from the surface and, and they're all trimmed up kind of equally. And so the safety uh, is there's really no safety issue in between uh, whole muscle cuts like ground chuck or ground sirloin and just your regular ground beef. Uh, that being said, consumers still need to make sure that they thoroughly cook their ground beef to 160 degrees and then use a meat thermometer, especially uh, if they're cooking hamburgers or ground beef. So uh, when consumers are buying ground beef in the store, what kinds of things should they look for? Well, the first thing that, that uh, I would look for is make sure that they're getting the amount that they actually require. Ground beef is very perishable. Uh, you don't want to store it in your refrigerator for more than a day or two. And so, and it doesn't freeze very well outside of a vacuum package. So make sure you get what the, the what you want. Then you should get the lean content that you're looking for and you're willing to pay depending on the application. And then I would look for things like uh, if it's fresh ground in the store, you want uh, like bright red color and, and, uh, and a nice fine grind. Or if it's a, a larger package from a central uh, processor, you'd be looking for things like the sell-by date. Uh, you want to make sure you haven't exceeded the sell-by date. The meat will be fine right up to that date. But after that, uh, it would be something where I wouldn't be too concerned about it, but it certainly wouldn't uh, be as fresh. That's one thing I'd be considering. Well, that's very helpful information. Thank you. Mm -hmm.